Hi, welcome to Clean Classics. This time, we're going to spend a little bit less time in the workshop, a little bit more time out on the roads. We're going to take the Series 3 for a bit of a road test and kind of run through what it's like to drive, really, and, and uh, enjoy it in some different terrains locally. So we're in the Series 3. We're just going to go for a little drive down to the local town um, and I'll take you through sort of the experience of driving a, an electric converted Land Rover. A very familiar thing. You turn the key, on it comes. Um, wait for the system to fire up. The, the, the keypad here will light up. Once it's lit up, we're ready to actually start the system. And it's as simple as that. The green light here will come on to signify that the, the, the vehicle has started, but otherwise there's really no other evidence anything has changed. Um, so, and now the ignition is on, just get it into drive. So I've got my foot on the brake and press the D button, which illuminates green and off we go. Now, while we've got the handbrake on here, that actually sends, there's a switch that sends a, a message to the system so we cannot drive forward. So if you get out to open a gate or something, your dog's in the car, it's not gonna launch towards you. So then we just drop the handbrake, put on throttle, and off we go. Simple as that. Everyone says that EV conversions are silent. They're a lot quieter than their uh, counterparts. However, there's definitely a good amount of characterful noise coming from the transmission and and all the other old vehicle parts, plenty of characterful clonks and, and rattles. Um, but yeah, it's by no means a silent experience. It's much, much quieter. But, uh, but yeah, we're really pleased with the sort of balance. It really feels like it's kept its soul. I know a lot of people will uh, like to have a conversation about that one. Um, so yeah, off we go. Give it a squirt. Certainly a lot more sprightly than uh, the old two and a quarter used to be. And like we've said in previous videos, the, the sort of how we've done it with, with trying to keep an eye on the weight distribution and the balance, it really does feel quite planted. So when you're going through corners and things, you do have a bit of confidence. Still an old Land Rover, but really pleased with the way the sort of the, the, the combination of things results in, in the driving experiences it's, yeah it feels nice so as i'm driving all i have to do is lift my foot off the brake and you get a gentle amount of braking force so coming into a corner or even coming up to some traffic lights you get a feel for for the amount of braking force you've got available and you can you can get quite used to it quite quickly and just use the throttle effectively to, to bring the car down to a stop. And you just then need the brakes as, a, as an additional braking force if you need to stop a bit more abruptly. Golly, are the roads wet today. So yeah, I haven't really put my foot on the brake since we left. It's just all that regen on the throttle. Let's squirt down the hill. Woo! The suspension is still a serious suspension, so <laughs> we know and love that. The car we're driving now is owned by a company called EV Classics. We're, we're actually doing a second car for them at the moment, and their plan is to rent a few of these out. They're based in London, but uh, I think they're talking to different hotels and various, various places that might want to rent it. So it could be, could be based anywhere, but uh, more than likely somewhere around London. Of course, anyone interested in, in renting an old, old series Land Rover that's been converted to electric, there aren't many other places you can do that, so so uh, yeah, get in touch. So uh, one of the things we did, took this one out and tried to give a real worst case scenario for its um, for its range. So we had the heater on, 70 miles an hour down the motorway, which for a brick like this with an old four wheel drive system, it's not its favorite way of driving. Um, 
and yeah, we were actually pretty pleased. We we, we knew it was going to have a a big impact versus the sort of normal A and B road pottering. Um, but so we got a little over 50 miles. So yeah, we were actually pretty pleased with that 50 miles in the sort of worst case stress test. Um, the more usual kind of use we envisage for these for these vehicles is A and B roads, pottering along, enjoying it. They're much, much more enjoyable to sort of enjoy the scenery and drive around lanes and things. So we did we did a test and, and around where we are, there's the, the um, North Downs. And so we were going up and down the North Downs in the range of 30 to 50 miles an hour. And that got us 75 and actually what's going to be 80 miles because it, it was 75 miles when the uh, the warning came on and you've got another at least five miles before it'll before it'll cause you any problems. So yeah, we got 80 miles of, of real sort of good real world use up and down quite quite fast roads, some slower roads, sort of real mixed use. If we get the chance before it goes back, we'd like to do a kind of much more sedate test and see how far we can really uh, really push the uh, push the range envelope but yeah we it's, it's definitely uh, an achievable hundred miles <laughs> cruising down by the beach, cruising along at 30, 40 miles an hour. It's just an absolute dream driving like in these kinds of environments. Yeah, the, the eagle-eyed viewers of you may have noticed that, that in our builds, there's quite a lot less levers down in the middle here. You'd normally find a black, a red, and a yellow knob doing the gear change and the four-wheel drive controls. We had quite a long debate in the workshop about whether we should or shouldn't keep these. We could have, you know, put switches on them and used them for various controls of the vehicle. But the thing that really swayed it for us was the fact that the, the middle seat user can now actually have somewhere for their legs to go. It really makes that middle seat a lot more usable. It's still snug, but, but much more usable. So this car has no levers at all, but most of our um, conversions, we retain the yellow lever um, and that links straight to the transfer box to allow you to select diff lock. So use off road, you've got that, that option to just gain that much more traction. Today we're looking at this Series 3. It's a car that we've previously converted to electric for a dealer and they, they, restored, they restored the vehicle and we just fitted the, fitted the EV system. The customers complained that the brakes weren't up to snuff so we've just got it in for an inspection and we found various things. One of the things is this wheel cylinder here is, is leaking. If you pull back the, the dust cover, you can see there's fluid inside the dust cover which means it's it's bypassing the seal in this in this wheel cylinder on the front but more concerning is the rear brakes so we'll have a look at those on the rear we're obviously on the near side of the vehicle um, so this shoe is the, is your leading shoe which should have the spring on it and the cam adjuster but someone has fitted the brake back plates to the wrong sides of the vehicles. So this back plate is actually the one for the offside and vice versa. So we're gonna to have to strip it all out and replace it. It's actually, it's actually quite dangerous really because your leading shoe is meant to be held tightly. So you can see the trailing shoe, which, which, which should be like that, you know, should be quite loose, is actually being held really tightly by the spring. Um, and 
when when the vehicle's traveling forward, your leading shoe is doing most of your braking, but but if it's not held back by a spring tight, it can jam up and bind and bind on. So it's actually, yeah, it's actually quite dangerous. It sort of em emphasizes the fact that you've got to you've got to get someone that knows what they're doing to do your to do to do the bits of your rebuild that really matter. The fundamental bits, brakes, drivetrain, have all got to be done. You know, they've all, <laughs> you know, it's just this is not, you know is not acceptable really, and you shouldn't be making mistakes like that. So we ran the offside, so obviously this is, this is the back plate for the other side. So again, it's the same scenario. The, the, the leading shoe should have this adjuster cam behind it and should have the top spring fitted to it. So it's all, it's all the wrong way around. So if we go to, the, to go to the offside front, you'll see that the front brakes have actually been fitted correctly. So you've got, you've got the, the, the cam adjuster on the, on the leading shoe, and the spring holding it back and holding that that front shoe in position and the trailing shoe is just held by the the bottom spring so it doesn't have doesn't have as much spring back you know all series vehicles are like that and that's why they sometimes bind up going backwards if they're a little bit over adjusted um, because the trailing shoe can then can then bind up when it when the when the wheel is going backwards so basically what we're saying is whoever put these brake back plates on did the rear axle rebuild once this banner's confiscating. out cruising around in the series three it's actually been quite a fun day pottering about um, and here we are in, in, a, in a Land Rover's natural habitat the back end of a farm somewhere thought we'd have a quick look under the bonnet um, while we stop here quite obviously different to the two and a quarter petrol or diesel but really what you can see here is is what we call our top box um, and in there is is it's basically a big high voltage junction box. It's also got all of our ECUs that control everything that's going on. And otherwise in the engine bay, there's a small part of the battery pack up the front with the motor right down low at the back, and then a battery box under each seat box. So fairly central in the car. Been a nice test of different terrains today. You know, took it down to the beach on the shingle, down through the lanes. There's been a lot of rain recently. So, so a few little, uh, bonus fords now on some slightly slippery grass and mud it's just brilliant in the countryside this thing and whilst this car is destined probably predominantly for a city life um, today's definitely shown that it it really feels very at home out in the countryside with all the different terrains you know it, it's it's not afraid of a bit of mud it's not afraid of a bit of water not afraid of a bumpy lane or two yeah it's just it's just fantastic out here in the sticks Awesome.